In this video, we're going to look at how data can be smoothed. The Spectrum Processing dialog window includes a property page smoothing. And on this property page, we have a method. So this determines the algorithm used to perform the smoothing operation. And the other parameter is the smoothing width, which determines the number of data channels that are used in order to improve the apparent signal to noise in a spectrum. When we smooth data, information is gathered from around each point and the point is adjusted based on that information. So let's first of all illustrate this using some features. So I'm going to display points rather than lines here. And then I'm going to create a background and the background, as you can see, is in red. But what I'm going to do is change that to be a null background. And the null background replaces any calculated background simply by the data itself. And then what I'll do is I will lock the background. And that's to say that once I have locked the background by having a region with this lock background type, then no processing operations will cause the recalculation of a background. And so we can then look at the difference between the background as the original data and how the process data evolves as we do the smoothing operations. To see the difference between the background and the data, we can put the residual on. And as you can see right now, the residual is zero. That The difference between the data and the background is zero and hence the residual zero but once we do a smoothing operation the residual then reports a difference between the data before any smoothing and that's in the form of this red trace which represents the background and the data points themselves if these data are collected using a pulse counted system and we were able to approximate the data in an ideal way then the difference between the approximation and the data would be a residual with a standard deviation of close to unity. The idea is therefore to use the residual standard deviation to examine how well a smoothing operation is performing with respect to a given set of data. So we would like to have a very uniform distribution in terms of this residual standard deviation and we'd like it to get close to unity. Now it's unlikely that we will get actually to unity because of the underlying shapes that appear within a spectrum but nevertheless we would like to get as close to unity without deforming the residual standard deviation. The smoothing operation that's responsible for this residual standard deviation was a savitsky gole quadratic applied to the data with five smoothing points. So this means that the quadratic equation is fitted to five points and the central point of these five is replaced by the value calculated from the quadratic equation. To illustrate how the svitsky gole algorithm works, we'll go to some data that have been copied from this file. And these data have been prepared with two regions. And one is purely for the display of the polynomial. And this, this is a skip background type, so no background is calculated within this interval from this region. However, the second interval is defined and it's this very narrow region. And this is a quadratic polynomial that is fitted in a least square sense to the data within this interval. So the interval contains one, two, three, four, five data points. So that corresponds to a smoothing interval of five in the savitsky gole algorithm. And I'll just close this now so I can zoom in a bit more. The mechanism by which savitsky gole smooths data is that the value at the center of this interval is replaced by the value calculated from the polynomial. And this calculation occurs for each and every point in the data set. So every point in the spectrum has effectively a calculation of a polynomial. And you can see as I move this interval, then the five points that are used in the calculation changes, 
and so the calculation of the quadratic changes. Nevertheless, the value at the center of this interval will be replaced by the value calculated from the polynomial and is by this means that smoothing is applied to the data set. So we're transferring information from these five points in order to work out a new value for this one in the center. Returning to the original data file, we can now see how this residual can be used to understand what's happening to data as you smooth it. So in this case, we have a relatively small residual standard deviation that indicates that we probably haven't got a good approximation to the data. So we could try doing this operation more times and each time we get perhaps a better approximation the residual is moving towards unity and the plot is uniform relatively uniform but this is one way of doing it that's repeatedly smoothing it or we could go back and we could try a wider interval about which we calculate our quadratic now this will be less of a problem for these data than others because this is a relatively broad peak that we're trying to smooth and so if we use nine points we end up with a, a much larger residual standard deviation the plot of the residual is reasonably uniform so this is not a bad approximation for these data and as I keep on repeatedly smoothing using this approximation you can see that we're getting closer to unity and as we look at the plot you can see that the peak shape is still relatively well formed and that's also evident in the residual standard deviation. So what happens if we look at a peak that is not so easily represented by a polynomial of degree 2 with 9 points? And this one here is a doublet and they are much sharper peaks, that's to say there are less points within each of these peaks. Let me first of all add a lock background type to these data so this is making sure that the spectrum and the background are identical so that's a the starting point for the residual and if I apply this same algorithm we get a residual standard deviation which is increasing towards unity but that's not necessarily good because if we look at the peaks themselves you can see that the residual is starting to produce some kind of shape which we really would not like to see. It should be all uniform and no rapid oscillations around peak maxima. And that's an indication that we, we're damaging the peak shape by our smoothing. The reason for these oscillations is that we have quite a restrictive approximation in the form of a quadratic and we're using nine points. So the number of points that are spanning this peak maximum and the flexibility of this quadratic are insufficient to properly represent these data and hence you tend to find some kind of strange shapes appear in the residual even though the residual standard deviation appears to be moving in the right direction the residual itself is indicating that we're damaging the peak shape so let's now res reset these data and we'll use another option that if I enter here rather than 2 I use 11 and I'm going to go for 19 points so I've increased the width that's used in the smoothing operation but I've also increased the degree of the polynomial and when I apply such an approximation I get that's one application I get a an improvement in the shape and the statistics here but it's not until we actually do it many times can we see whether it's damaging this residual and I've now set that to be a hundred well let's make that 200 let's do this 200 times and each time I do this I get a larger residual but each time I do this if I'm doing this incorrectly I will be damaging the shape of this residual and I'm not so I've got enough flexibility and enough information to generate a residual that is reflecting something that is closer to Poisson statistics 
and is not interfering with the shape of this peak. 